Oh, <laughs> see that reflex? <laughs> Hey everyone, so we hope that you enjoyed our feature on float fishing with bait at Weaver Lake several weeks ago. And uh, in this video, we're going to go through all the fishing gear that we use in that feature. Uh, so we start out by talking about the fishing rods and reels, then we go into the details on the terminal tackles such as float, hooks, and the bait that we use to catch uh, lots of trout. So the fishing rod and reel that we use for trout has to be fairly light. Uh, if you watch the video, um, most of the fish are between 12 and 14 inches long and sometimes even smaller. So you want to use a really light rod to make your fishing experience really enjoyable. Uh, there's no point going out there and use a salmon rod um, and catch a small trout because the fish can barely bend that rod. So a spinning rod that's rated between two and six pound test um, is best uh, or something if you can find a lighter rod uh, even better so um, you want a rod that's fairly light um, not very long uh, this rod these two rods right here are around six feet long and that's as long as you want especially if fishing on the boat um, if you have a longer rod it becomes somewhat um, somewhat of a nuisance um, you might hit some of the nails uh, on the boat uh, if the rod is too long so a light rod you want to go with a light spinning reel and what I mean what I mean by light spinning reel it's a really small reel so the reel that we use in this video is a pretty old reel actually this is a Shimano Stratic 1000 um, so it's the smallest um, at the time anyway smallest model that you can find um, I bought this one around 10 years ago and it still works really well so this reel right here is fed with um, four pound test uh, fishing line um, again if fishing for small fish you don't need fishing line that's too thick um, a light line is more sensitive and can detect bites much better than thicker line so four pound test is more than enough actually um, because the fish that we're catching only weigh maybe I don't know 250 grams or maybe a little bit more so that's half a pound uh, so that line is uh, very adequate for this fishery so a spinning outfit for trout fishing is fairly inexpensive. Uh, you can get a fishing rod down to $20 or if you want to invest on a better rod you can spend up to $100 on them. Um, fishing reels are slightly more expensive uh, so this is a Shimano Stratic uh, which is one of the more high-end fishing reels coming from Shimano um, so this one is fairly expensive but you can get one get an entry-level spinning reel something like Shimano Sahara which is better um, for this fishery you don't need a really good reel for it. Uh, this is actually pretty nice uh, so the Shimano like I said this one here the Stratic 1000 I bought about 10 years ago um, it's you know, pretty small but it's still pretty big and I've actually fished for pink salmon with these uh, with no problem. If you look at this Shimano Sahara here it's actually it's again it's a 1000 model but it's actually smaller than that Stratic 1000 and uh, it's really light and just really nice to work with. I really like a small spinning outfit when it comes to catching trout. When it comes to terminal tackle for trout fishing, floats, uh, hooks, swivels, weights, um, anything that goes at the end of your fishing line, um, try not to carry too much. You see a lot of people carrying a big ta uh, tackle box with lots of different things in there and usually end up using one or two things so it, it's really pretty, it's not really necessary to carry a lot of stuff when you go fishing. Uh, it, it tires you out when you have to carry things around you, especially you have to move around quite a bit. So what I usually do is keep everything in a little box like this when I go trout fishing. And uh, it comes in th many different compartments. So I've got weights in one compartment, I've got hooks and swivels uh, and beads in the other one. And uh, I've got floats as well in here. i got a few pretty tight rigs in here so that I can just uh, tie it onto the main line and be fishing right away instead of spending all that time tying hooks when the fish are biting. So let's start by looking at the floats that we use for trout fishing. So the trout again, the trout that we're catching are fairly small 
So you want to use a pretty small float. So small goes with small. Uh, this float right here is for salmon fishing. If you look at it, it says 20 grams on it, which means you need 20 grams of weight to balance this float. So this float has too much buoyancy. If you put this float, uh, tie this float up for trout fishing, what's going to happen is the trout is not going to be able to pull this float down because it simply is too big. Um, it, it might bob a little bit. And the end result is you won't be able to detect the bites too much. Uh, you, you, you see that float goes down a little bit. You don't know when to strike it. You don't know whether the, the, the fish has the bait in its mouth. Um, so you will miss, miss a lot of bites if you're using a big float. So what you want to do is you want to go with the, tiny, the tiniest float that you can find. Um, but at the same time, if the float is too small and only requires a, a little amount of weight uh, to balance it, you won't be able to cast it out. So there has to be a fine balance between um, you want to use enough weight, but at the same time you want to use a float that's small enough that the float uh, can be pulled down by this fish that you're catching. Uh, so what I've been using in this trip is actually these stripe indicators made by DNA fishing. Uh, so stripe indicators are actually tiny floats that you put on uh, when you use fly, when you use for fly fishing, actually, uh, they're, they're really small, so you can actually cast with a fly line. But DNA actually makes um, these try indicators made in many different sizes. These ones are the biggest biggest one that they make, and uh, I find these ones are in fact too big for fly fishing. So I've actually decided to use this on the spinning rod, and it actually works pretty well. Um, this thing here requires a couple of um, split shots to balance with it and uh, these split shots are heavy enough for me to cast um, the, the rig out to where I want to fish especially with a uh, really light line uh, again let's go back to the fishing line of fishing reel if you're using light setup with a very thin light line it can actually cast further even though you only have small amount of weight on it now the other two things that you need are swivels and hooks. Um, you, act, you can actually fish without a swivel. Um, you can actually tie your hook onto the main line um, and pinch a couple uh, split shots above the hook and fish like that. And that's perfectly fine. But what I like to do is I like to tie a swivel onto the main line, then tie a leader at the other, the other end of the, uh, the swivel and tie the hook onto the end of the leader and then pinch a couple of split shots onto the main line just above the swivel. Uh, this way, uh, when the split shot uh, slides a little bit, and it does slide at times, uh, especially when you hook a fish, it will slide up and down. And if you don't have that swivel on it, the split shot might slide all the way down to the hook. But I mean, you can always adjust it by pulling back up and you know, after you cast, after you re retrieve a line, bring it in and check it. But that's a bit of a hassle. And the other thing is using pretty thin line uh, by sliding that split shot up and down, um, you will uh, cause abrasion on the line. And that's not good because over time, you, the line might snap if you hook a fish. So by having the swivel there, the split shot will simply uh, slide down and sit above the swivel. And that's perfect, perfectly fine. Um, and you don't have to adjust it. You can just sit like that. The hooks that we use during this trip are size number six, um, which is pretty standard for trout fishing. Um, you can go up to size four. A lot of times we use size four as well if you're using bigger baits like krill and shrimp. But because we're using single eggs in, during this trip, uh, we decided to go with a smaller hook. Now, if you're watching the video, we did deep hook a couple of fish because the hook was too small and uh, that made it <clears throat> fairly tough to get a hook out at times. So there is a disadvantage of using smaller hooks. Someone suggested that we should use circle hooks and I think we're gonna try that in the future and just give it a go and test it out and if it works, we'll do another video on it. When it comes to bait fishing with trout, there are so many different types of bait you can use. Uh, you can use dewworms, which is pretty common and most people start out uh, trout fishing will use dewworms, you can use maggots, you can use krill, you can buy daily shrimps from supermarkets, you can use marshmallows, you can use corn. There are just so many different types of bait you can use and uh, sometimes one produces better than the other one so it's best to try out different things. Um, for During this trip 
we're using Polsky bait both of fire single eggs uh, which comes in uh, little jars like that and uh, they come in many different colors um, it, my personal favorite it's always been pink uh, when I'm sand fishing or trout fishing I've always believed that pink works better than the other ones but you can also use uh, natural colors like this orange right here um, you can if you want to go get a, a bit fancier you can use pink with glitter on it and perhaps that works just as well. So many different colors you can you can get in different jars and uh, we fished for maybe three four hours during that trip and we went through two of these jars just because the fish were biting pretty constantly. So the way to bait these eggs is by picking one up and you simply thread it through the middle of the egg onto the hook and usually I put two eggs on just in case one pop and so you still have one more egg that the fish can bite onto it. Um, but a lot of times you can, if the fish are biting really well, you can just use one egg. Uh, there are many times during this trip we cast, would cast an egg out and the, the fish took it right away. So definitely try it out. Um, size 6 hook is fairly small, uh, so you only need two eggs to cover this hook up. Uh, if you're using a bigger hook, then perhaps you need two, uh, three or four eggs onto it. Okay, so now let's show you how to rig up the entire setup. So from the end of the main line, uh, what you want to do is you want to thread your stride indicator onto the line. This stride indicator is actually a quick lease indicator, so it comes with the actual indicator and a little rubbery stopper. Um, but you actually need a toothpick to fix it. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So let's thread this indicator on first. And then we put the rubber stopper on. And most people, what they do is they, they when you fly fishing with indicators, you, you form a little loop right here. And then you, between the rubber stopper and the indicator, and you, you put that together like that. And that stops the uh, indicator from moving up and down. And when the fish bites, the tension actually pulls that loop straight and it releases the indicator and the indicator can actually slide down by that point. But since we're float fishing on a spinning outfit, I don't want that thing to come loose all the time. So, you know, after each fish I have to go back up and adjust it and all that and that's a bit of a hassle so what I usually do is I simply grab a toothpick and fix the float by pushing that toothpick into the rubber stopper and that should fix that indicator on the line like so and that doesn't move and that can that will stay there for for a long time until unless that toothpick falls out um, and you don't need to adjust that so now that you have your indicator on the line uh, the next thing to do is to tie the swivel onto the line and from the other end of the swivel you want to tie a leader now the leader can be one foot long to two feet long it doesn't really matter too much when you lake fishing so something like that something like that is long enough okay and from the end of that leader you want to tie your hook onto it so instead of tying all that while you're fishing uh, you, you end up wasting you, you will end up wasting a lot of time if you're doing that um, if, especially the fish biting. What I usually do is I have these pre-tied rigs uh, that I've done at home uh, which is simply you got the swivel and you got the leader and you got the hook all tied up together. So let's take a look at how the whole setup look at the end. So you got your indicator, you got your swivel tied onto the end of the main line, then you got the leader tied onto the other end of the swivel and then you follow down the leader you have a size 6 hook at the end but that's not it uh, what you need to do now is you need a split shot pinched onto 
the main line just above the swivel and this uh, this bushel right here is going to bring your bait down to where the fish are and at the same time it's going to balance that indicator so it doesn't sit sideways like that on the surface if you don't have that special on there that indicator is going to be sitting like that on the water but by adding that on it's going to sink that indicator a little bit and the the water level is actually going to be sitting somewhere around that yellow portion or that black line on the indicator so any of that orange part or the red part is exposed um, above the water so when the fish pulls down the bait, pulls down the hook it actually, that, that indicator will actually go down like that and then you have a fish on With your spinning rod and reel and terminal tackle ready uh, there are not too many other items you need for this fishery you might want to carry a pair of needle nose plier just so you can take the hook out of the fish quite easily and this also comes in pretty handy uh, for pinching the the hook, the, the barbel of the hook down uh, because the hook needs to be barbless uh, in this fishery. Um, so there you have it. It's, it's a pretty simple setup that you need to have um, and you can catch plenty of trout with it. Um, and for more information on fishing in British Columbia, please check out our website at fishingwithrod.com and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and please leave a comment if you have any other questions regarding this fishery or any other fisheries in British Columbia. So until next time, good luck fishing.